we're gonna we're gonna focus a little bit on the content for today, which is building your team. Um, and you know, Scott, you you're a team for Amanda. You're part of the team for Amanda. Amanda's part of the team for you. It's a great right. example. Uh, Katie Griffin is is uh, has been uh, traditionally uh, part of our team. Um, you know, and um, and uh, you know, you need you need you need a money person. You need a lawyer, title person. You need a realtor. Don't forget the realtors. Um, you, you, you know, you, you may, may need a good home inspector. I mean, you need to build a team. You need, you need advisors and friends with whom to sort of chew on deals and think about them. Hey, promise not to go after this one. Can I buy, pass this one by you? If, if I choose not to take it, then you can take it. But just, can I actually safely discuss this one with you? Sure. Yeah, I'm your friend. I'm loyal to you. I'm part of your team. Talk to me. Um, and by the way, people like that are great. They're your sometimes competitors. But most of the time, we can't do a deal, right? Not everyone is able to do a deal 365 a year. Uh, often, you know, you're, you're on the bench, your 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 powder's not dry, and 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 you know, you know. So so we're competitors, but not always to each other. We can be very friendly about that and share share deal opportunities. Nick is great at collaborating in that way, and that's what we're here to talk about. And then also, I just think it's silly uh, to have a meeting of people interested in the market and not talk about the market for a minute. So that may not per se be on our agenda, but I have some things I want to talk about. I'm noticing the way that um, larger institutions uh, that are charged with studying the market are, are breaking it down. It's not super complex. You don't need a huge algorithm, um, but they're doing it looking at data. And I just want to talk a little bit about that um, before we before we part ways. So, you know, um, I don't know if... Um, Katie, um, you you turned it off for a second, but we should also allow you. Scott introduced himself. We should allow you to introduce yourself. We we certainly like to uh, lead the way into that intro. So Nick, without any further ado, why don't you introduce Katie, and then she can tell us more about herself. Katie is a rock star. I, I again, I'm I'm just amazed. She not only leads a uh, a new office in D.C. for Universal Title, where she's uh, um, I guess the manager managing. Um, lawyer but she also uh, does a lot of transactions so with that comes a lot of responsibility and and uh, being on your toes for what might happen uh inevitably and title issues <clears throat> as i further my career in real estate uh are sometimes the most complex and debated so uh without further ado katie um you know i have her number here i don't know if i should black it out or erase ah. it. um <laughs> um it's but you do have her email please. yeah she referred to, she is a great team member she's always willing to get on a call to figure it out um so katie will be joining us today and uh i guess if i missed anything katie if you wanted to say something to this group no well i'm pleased to be here it's nice to um be meeting with you all um i have really enjoyed the way that um a real estate career and law career that I kind of fell into has allowed me to touch so many different aspects of people's lives, including um, seeing the way that people's lives are changed by investing in real estate, seeing the way that it opens horizons for them in their wealth building that I don't think that they had any concept of. Um, and, you know, sitting and talking with people, you know, we talked about refinance markets when the refinance market, um, when rates go down, I get to see all of my real estate investors coming through and sometimes refinancing, like I see them one after the other refinancing their investment properties and talking about how this is, how their kids are going to college and, you know, how, um, they've changed their lives. So. Um, I do think it's fun to tackle the properties that have issues. I think it's fun to, um, you know, come up with some creative solutions to problems. So I'd be happy to be a resource for everybody on this call and in this conversation. Um, let me know how someone who does title all day, every day can uh, help you get where you need to go. I, I just read she specializes in con, uh, contractual and title issues. <laughs> you know, it's issues, you know. Uh, I don't think we would be in business if there wasn't for issues. And um, man, I've I've just had so many title issues lately. Um, not not in terms of like the title, but in terms of the lender partner and how 
you touch a part of that um, realm as well. I did oh. not realize what also what wonderful schools you went to, Katie. I love, <laughs> I love uh, William and Mary, and um, yeah. and you got to tip your hat to UVA. Didn't did you grow up in Virginia? I did. I grew up in Richmond, Virginia. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool, cool, I'm, cool. I've kind of got a corner of my wall of degrees in the. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And by the way, Richmond's a spot to think about investing in. Um, I, I can't claim to be an expert, but I'm. I'm overwrought with curiosity about both Baltimore and Richmond. Yeah. Um, it looks like Chelsea, did you have your, your hand up to ask a question? We might have. Nope, no question. Okay, cool. Um, so, so yeah, today's topic is, is building your team. Um, and uh, yeah, go, go to the disclaimer if you don't mind. So this, this basically is a whole lot of words to say that uh, this is not a consultation, although there are a lot of people in this meeting who could provide a, a, a paid consultation. Um, this is just a group of people getting together and, and, uh, and talking about ideas. So there's no you know, advice per se being dispensed. It's pretty much what this says. Um, and, and as members of uh, the GRID network, we've, we've got to go through all the GRID stuff including the proper legal T's and C's. Um, we are a group that exists to get together and have open uh, conversations. There are topics that we, uh, you know, what's the word, um, curate um, and, and, and tee up to discuss. Um, we, we sometimes, you know, deviate from the script when it feels, I don't know, like something else is overwhelming our curiosity, you know, beyond what the script is dictating. Um, the script today is, you know, to talk about um, putting together your your team. Um, our background is that, you know, I'm I'm uh, running these uh, grid uh, meetings with my partner Nick. We're also uh, not just partners in the grid network, but we run a sales team called N Garcia Properties. This will be if we do it. Knock wood, the tenth straight year we did 100 million in sales. Um, there are teams that have done much more than that, but not many teams that have done that for more years than that. Um, it would be a very, very, very short list in this metro area. Um, I see some some guests who really are family at this point, um, you know, who are, um, you know, as rabid about real estate investing. Particularly, we have a little bit of a bent towards buy and hold versus, you know, fixing and flipping or, or developing condos or, or things like that or, you know, commercial. I think we, we tend to, uh, just because of our personal DNA, doesn't have to be this way. It's not the definition of this group, but... So, uh, some of us who attend a lot of these um, meetings are love um, baka baka baka. What is that? Uh, some of us in this meeting love buy and hold residential. What's baka stand for? Buy and kick ass. <laughs> I don't know what it stands for. Um, but um, but I, I see some members uh, who've joined uh, this meeting who who are definitely into that. Um, you know, I don't know, Brian, <laughs> if there's a if there's a, a short version of, of your uh, saga of a story. But, you know, I mean, uh, you know, at a, at a relatively uh, a young age, uh, not that many years out of his uh, completing his academic uh, career, um, you know, uh, Brian has wrapped his arm around a huge multi-unit uh, only recently, and it was a real epic journey to get from the idea to, to the settlement table. Um, not sure if you're, are you driving, Brian? You want to talk any at all about what you did recently? Hey, Carlos, I'm at the gym now, so for the sake of uh, sparing everyone, I'll, I'll let you give a quick synopsis if you like. I'm happy to give one more in detail in a little bit when I'm gone. Well, I'm sure you could get a little bit of uh, frustration out bang, banging against those weights over there, because uh, it was it was not all it was not all peaches and cream. Um, but I mean, oh my goodness, we were under contract for the better part of four months. Uh, the, the 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 seller uh, violated the contract in 22 different ways. Uh, Brian, more than anybody, um, uh, had to chip in beyond uh, what he'd agreed to financially. Uh, our, our brokerage did too, the, the other brokerage did too, um, because the seller was just basically uh, violating left and right, but, um, and not agreeing to, uh, to make any amends for anything that she did. 
But the bottom line is that Brian wanted the property badly enough and got a good mortgage product lined up. And now he's got like a 5,000 square foot monster in Columbia Heights that's fundamentally uh, fully uh, got renovated. And he's sort of, uh, you know, re restoring it because it's got the renovation has some miles on it. Um, but, at, you know, and, and, and only in America, he did it. He did it with a VA loan. So uh, a zero down uh, a loan. Uh, which I is did just, not know that. Wow. I got to be pumped. Yeah, at a, at a later date. Thanks, Carlos. At a later date, I'll give some more insights. Uh, but Carlos did forget to mention the, the biggest beast was the certificate of occupancy battle that we fought for about two, two to three months and how we were able to overcome that with lawyers. So shout out to any lawyers in the group. Uh, life's better with you guys. You're probably the only person in D.C. who'd say that. There's so many of us. Uh, no offense uh, to Scott and Katie. Uh, I'm a former attorney, so I'm guilty as charged. Um, I've read talk Baca about the sales silly. price, Brian? Baca is silly, but uh, might have other connotations, huh? Brian, can we talk about the sales price? Someone's asking. Sure. So we did two million fifty thousand with zero down VA at three and a quarter, and we actually wrapped in a fifty k seller credit. So at one point, my closing costs were only nine hundred eighty three dollars on paper. Nine hundred eighty three dollars. Yeah, only in America. Only in America. So. Goals of the grid. We'll, and we'll get back to your story a little bit, a little bit later, Brian, um, when we talk about the market. Um, the idea is basically to you know, increase your contacts in this business. Um, for some of you who are sales oriented, that has a certain connotation. For those of you who are not, um, it also means just like having a richer network of people um, so that you can get more opportunities like deal with deals, deal sources and more advice. Um, uh, the, the return on relationship means that like, we're about adding value to each other's lives. Um, so hopefully this feels very communal and open and sharing productive. Um, and not like, you know, people are like trying to keep ideas to themselves, keep resources to themselves, but rather has, has more of an open, open vibe to it. Um, and yeah, we're all about investing. You have to invest in, in assets, obviously that, that, that make you, uh, uh returns or, or, or grow your net worth. Uh, but also in, in the people uh, in your life who, who uh, you can help and who can help you. Um, and, oh, zero funding fee. Yeah. <sighs> Amazing. I think you can be a business person as a male, a female, transgender, any which way um, to answer that question. Um, and then um, in terms of developing leadership and expertise, right, we're really trying to we're really trying to um, figure out what we can do to help other people out with 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 this idea of of you know leading the way. Um, that's you know it's not necessarily for everybody, but it's I think it's a big component of of, of what we're trying to do. I, I I know some people in this meeting who've come a long way, um, and some people who are absent uh, today who've really come a long way. You know, you can go from it's just an idea. You wish you could do it, but you're, you got great concerns to, you know, stepping in and actually starting to do it to then before you know it, you've done it a number of times. And, you know, you may not, you may be too modest to, to recognize, but you've actually got a lot that you can share with other people who are not as far along and it can really, really be helpful uh, to them. And if you ask me, that's leadership. Um, so the elements of building your team. Yeah, so I put this on. Hmm. Hmm. She's trying to get back in, but I agree. I don't think she should be on this call. I can't quite tell what the person's trying to do. <clears throat> uh, she's trying to get back in. No, I mean, in terms of being present, I can't tell what the goal is. No idea. All right, so let's move forward. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, spammed is right. Um, so anybody else want to go before we, we get started? 
with an introduction? Yeah, I'd be happy to. If um, Perfect, yeah. go ahead. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Israel. I'm 25 years old, and I live in Arlington, Virginia. Um, I just closed on my third property in Virginia. Um, it's a cute little single family detached on Glebe Road. Um, let's see. Nice. Thank you. I uh, My day job's in law. Um, I'm not an attorney. I work with patents. And I started when I was 22. Um, I graduated college, living in a nice group home in DC proper. Um, and I was effectively do the handyman for the landlord at the time, but I had to pay him rent to live there. And I was like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> so COVID started. That was a good deal for him. Yeah, yeah. Interesting guy, interesting house. I loved being there, but I only moved out when I found something worth buying. It was um, a cute little townhome in South Arlington, also close to Glebe Road in Sherlington. And moved in, did a bit of a value add, and I turned it into a, a pretty large cash flowing machine. So I can rent it out for 5,500 and PITI is 2,700. So saved up, kept at the W2 job, bought a cute place in Boston, another townhome, and PITI there is 3,500 and I can rent that out for close to 6,000. Right now I think I'm getting 5,700 a month. Um, my model is to rent by the room to young postgrads, just do the house hacking kind of thing. So I bought this house that I'm in right now. I've been here for about a week um, and I've got some summer interns living with me, which, you know, I'm 25, so I, it works out well. Um, and the plan is they'll be here for the summer and then I'll start renovations come September 1st. So I'm really, I'm just getting into the game. My timing is incredibly lucky. The first two loans are 5% down, 2.5% rates. Just good timing. And um, I actually got my real estate license. So I'm licensed in DC, Maryland, Virginia. So I was also able to look for my own deals and scout and save on the back end. Um, so that's how I found the third place. Um, other than that, I'm a big runner. So if anyone else is into running marathons and you're a little masochist, then feel free to join me on the trails. Sweet. That is, that's amazing. So 25 years old, three properties. Um, it, it's almost, it, it's, uh, it's almost intimidating. That's amazing. No, please. So, I hear the stories from you guys and I'm, I'm humbled. I have pretty far to go. Well, I'm sure that you, you want to go further, farther. Um, and, um, you will, um, but, uh, it, it's, it's a great start. So what would you say? Hey, Carlos. Yeah. Hey, Carlos, this is Brian. I met Jeff yesterday. I was selling him some washers and dryers at Fairmont, and I told him he has to be here tonight. So oh, <laughs> he and I connected cool. for a couple hours yesterday. You you recognized a, a kindred spirit instantly. <laughs> yep. You're like, wait a minute, this guy's scrappy. <laughs> um, so so you're 25 years old. What would you say that the um, gross aggregate value is of the three? Right now, I'm in about $1.8 million worth of debt. I'm taking in gross four, six, probably bring it in close to fourteen dollars to $15,000. And my PITI is around 9000 So there's a net spread of five there. And that's not including principal pay down equity. The appreciation from the first townhome I bought was it's already been like 150000 And I mean, I just good timing, good location. So... Very lucky, uh, but it's been a year, Daddy. I really, really miss you. So, just good time. I love this energy. Yeah, it's strange. <laughs> um, it's so strange. Yeah. Um. Well, so um, there's a lot to unpack right there. Uh, one of the conversations I've got ongoing in my life is that I have a financial planner. Mm -hmm. And the way I met my financial planner is that, well, I got approached by a number of them, but the way I ended up working with this particular financial planner was he was like, I got to right size you. Like you're all real estate. And like, <laughs> you know, we need to, we need to somewhat balance you. So I've had now a pretty much almost a two decade ongoing conversation with, um, 
with with uh, Dan Schiffman, my financial planner, um, about balancing me out. And 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 he's he's done that like very incrementally. We've done some things other than real estate. But when we first met, I was all real estate. Well, fast forward to more recently, we had a conversation. I wanted to make some philanthropic commitments, and I wanted to be able to ones that would hurt. They weren't going to be easy. And so I wanted to be able to convince my um, my my wife that 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 would we be it wouldn't be insane to do it that it would not be insane to do it. But I wanted to use numbers, so he put together um, uh, an analysis of our situation, and it included you know the present, the near term, and the far off future. And you know it includes things like you get to be a certain age, you can start getting social security, you get to be a certain age, and and it's uh, mandatory that you have to draw down on your four hundred one k. So at a minimum, we know because it's going to grow by this much, we're drawing this much down, and so forth. And he and his assistant put this thing together, and they generated this report, and and then we had a call to go over the draft version of it, and he said, I think you can be able to convince your wife that you can make some serious commitments, and you guys will be all right. Like you're not going to be poor in your retirement. You're not you're not throwing it all away. Um, and certain things are going to compound and certain mortgages are going to fall away. And then by then it'll be all gravy and rents will have risen and blah, 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 blah. Um, and then he said at the end of the, the call, he goes, Carlos, I just want to let you know that I've been working with you for like the better part of 20 years. But just and this gets to you, Jeffrey, this is about you. Um, he goes, um, I appreciate now. Like what you've been doing on a, in a different on a different level. And would you real estate and he, and you're buy and hold real estate. And he goes, your footprint. It's almost like we, we took a piece of paper, you know, and like, let's say this is your stocks. It's a colored in circle. And then this is your real estate. <laughs> and it's, it's only this colored in when I meet you. And then I, and then I work with you for years and it's like colored in by this much. But now we're looking at a moment when in the future, first of all, it's going to be all colored in and it will have grown. So it's going to be something like this off, off, all filled in. You know what I'm saying? And the, the idea of the footprint, the asset base. So, you know, you were very focused on your cash flow as you should be, and everyone talks about that. But the first thing that struck me of the numbers you said is that you're freaking 25 and you have fu fundamentally a $2 million asset footprint. I'm like, my God, what's it going to be when he's 35? Oh, my goodness, when he's 45. Oh, my goodness, when he's my age, I'm in my mid-50s, when he's 55. Holy cannoli. It's going to be a bigger footprint and more of it will be filled in. And it's just happening for you as long as you service that debt. And based on the cash flow description that you've given us, I think, you know, knock wood again, you're going to be good. Um, amazing. Well, thank you. Yeah, my strategy tends to be take out the, and this was when interest rates were as low as humanly possible, take out the largest loan where I could at least cash flow, even if not, you know, come out a thousand, two thousand dollars a month ahead. The deals I was really focused on allowed me to be two thousand dollars a month ahead at the end of the day. Um, now that interest rates have gone up a touch and, you know, I, I really prefer to be cash flow focused, um, you know, I, I've kind of taken a step back. And my current property, maybe I'm able to make a thousand bucks, but the equity appreciation of a single family detached house in Arlington is going to be unparalleled, in my opinion. The first two are townhomes. They're great. They're in really good areas as well. Um, but now that I've got decent cash flow, I've got a good W-2. The first couple of properties are, you know, making me some cash. The equity is where the real meat of the bone is. So that's, that's my approach right now. Yeah, and, and you know, I think a question that I hope to talk to you about in the future is um, what's so what's so important about cash flow? <laughs> Which is sort of a crazy thing to say. It's like, what? How can you say that? It's a, I, I agree. I understand. Um, that. If 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 what you're trying to do is drive like you know a ten times better car this year or next year, yeah, cash flow. But if what you're trying to do is become, you know, um, materially or exponentially wealthier mm -hmm. way down the road, um, what's so important about cash flow? So I agree with you. And right now my holdup is on financing. So I'm really trying to 
dig into DSCR loans to find alternative lending practices. Um, I've been doing owner occupied for the last you know couple of years, so I can only move so fast. I'll essentially be done with this place very soon, and then I'll be pigeonholed by the owner occupied loan for another six to nine months. So that's kind of the next step in my process: is do I turn to multi? Do I do I turn to various types of lending? You know, I've got a good path as it is, but branching out from here is a big decision. And there's a lot of paths to take, so I could use some guidance. On a lot that. of paths to take, and you know, what pace you need to move at is always a good question. It's very subjective. Um, yeah, yep. Yeah. Happy yeah. to have all of those conversations. I don't want to dictate the group, but I, I just wanted to introduce myself. Well, no, but yours is, yours is a great case study. Um, you know, you're off to a great start. Um, Alexis, are are you and and Russell both here, or is it just you? Yeah, we're both here, Carlos. And how are you guys doing? Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah, it was nice to see you um, a couple of weeks ago. I'm sorry yeah. I lost track of you at that event. Yeah, no, it was a great event at your place. But yeah, not too much for us. I mean, we just moved to our new primary in April. So um, yeah, well, you you and uh, Jeffrey are birds of a feather, right? You you do it through your primary. You keep moving. Yeah. Yeah, so I've been doing a lot of landscaping in the backyard the past month or so to add some value to the property, but that's been kind of our main focus right now. Yep, yep. So um, Alexis and Russell are are a couple um, who uh, have been really moving at a good clip, Jeffrey, uh, a, lot, a lot like you, pretty much the moment that the loan permits uh, get the next loan kind of thing, um, and um, have done uh, several uh, very good fee simples um, in the last 36 months um, that, uh, in their case, they're all in D.C. You're in Eckington, Brookland, and Capitol Hill. Right, Russ? Yep. 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 Um, and in Eckington, they've I hope I'm not, is it okay to talk about your, your portfolio? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. You've got the two unit in Eckington and upstairs, did you end up like Jeffrey and like I like to do and Nick does, did you, and, and Brian's doing now, did you end up doing um, uh, groups, uh, a group and the upper unit in Eckington? Yeah, yeah. So we just had uh, some tents move in there in May last month and nice. now with our need uh our tenants in the basement are moving out so looking to for new tenants there increasing the rent mm -hmm. and then capitol hill it's also a uh a group yeah yeah so that's a single family but yeah there's yeah we have three tenants there um, yeah so scott this is something you may want to really um pay attention to you've got um a handful of people in this meeting who believe um very very strongly in the power of the this alternative market to super high rents um it's a solution to a problem their rents are too high um right. so you got people who either can't afford them or they can but they just won't pay them you know um you mentioned you know a uh, uh, voucher for 2600 for a one bedroom uh yeah and if you're um a young professional non non voucher qualified um, that that is either uh, impossible or uh, you know untenable um, and so because so many people uh, face that reality or feel that way uh, in this town where rents have, have gone um, there is a thriving uh, uh, young professional group house sub market um, and the thing about this sub market is that they uh, they all want to be exactly where you should invest if you want some upside in two ways that matter the equity that jeffrey's talking about appreciating the growth in his you know equity nut you know but the other part of it which i love and this is this goes back to my question what does cash flow matter so much is rising rents because you could you could you could you could run you could run an analysis on a property you've got your heart set on and you're like, oh, I love this one, but it, the cash flow is just meh. And then you've got another one like, eh, I feel meh about it. 
but the cash flow is great. So do you just follow the math? Not, not me. That's not what I've done. I've, I, I got to love my houses. So sorry. Um, maybe I'm not a real investor. Probably true. Um, but it's definitely grown my wealth a lot. Um, I, I'm one who does it a good bit with his heart. I, I got to love the house. And, um, and the, rents, the rents grow for me. I've seen them grow. Uh, where the young professionals I want to uh, provide housing to want to live, I go. And when I do, my rents grow massively so that, you know, in year one, it looks meh. And then by year five, it's like, whoa. And by year 10, it's like, oh, my God, I can't believe this is like the lottery results I've just won. It's just crazy, crazy good. So um, so that's important that where they want to be is where you ought to be. But to me, really, really important, um, really important. And then, I mean, there's about five or eight attributes to the group house model that make it like also just beautiful the way it all works together, like something that's just beautifully designed um, or an engine that hums where every piece is just working in concert. Well, but if I had to pick out a second one um, that apart from the uh, the values uh, on the rent side and the uh, resale side keep growing, it would be that, um, and the, the longer that you're a, a landlord, the more you appreciate this. And I do think this is a, a very positive aspect of the voucher program, by the way. From what I hear from successful um, Section 8 landlords, this is a great attribute of that segment as well, is minimal turnover. Okay. Everyone knows when they've been around this thing long enough that disruption is not what you, you want. You want the thing to keep on rolling and, and as few uh, vacancies as possible. And so my groups, they live, they, they never leave all at once. They rarely leave all at once. They, one young professional leaves and we just replace him or her on the lease and we just keep rolling. I had one group. I've told Nikki this story. Um, shoot, ten years on a single lease, five-person group house. But by year number ten, none of the original five was still there. It was just all their friends and the, the people in their network. You know, so, so, so it, it morphed into a different group of people. But it was the same freaking document, tattered and torn, coffee stained, and amendments all over it, like this thick. That lease was. You know, by the end of it, so many adjustments were made to who's on the lease or what the rent is over time. But I didn't have like a wholesale, like, oh my God, I've got to paint the whole house. Yeah, I right. paint a room once in a while. So-and-so says, this is broken. Sure, we fix it, but no, no gap. Carlos, no gap. do you mind if I ask you a quick question? Yeah. It, do you see that as a model where you could hire a property manager? Because I, I hired a property manager for my two condos. And that's just because I have uh, been traveling around the world for long periods of time, different time zones, and just did not want to have to be responsible for any kind of tenant issues. Do you see that? Do you think that would work? I mean, obviously we hit the cash flow, but would that work as well with the group house? I happen to know it works because I've, I've also transitioned uh, all my group houses to a, a manager. And okay. he also has his own group houses. So he, he loves the, the segment as well. He's a true okay. believer. Yeah. That's important to have a manager than actually that's that's perfect if they actually have their own group houses because you know they know what they're doing. Yeah, he's a member of, of our chapter. His name is Scott Bloom of oh. Columbia Columbia Property Management. He's my property manager. <laughs> oh my world. Well he's also, he's also the estate planning client, so I know I can he, I'll keep him doing a good job. <laughs> well, good for you. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it, he'd be a good estate planning client to have because he's 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 building something. Cool. Um, yeah, he's cool. building something. That's that's, that's small world, small town. And did you, Jeffrey, did you have your hand up? Yeah, so just a point to add. So Scott, I, I can see where you're coming from and there's a, a good way to look at the amount of effort required on a personal level for the three tiers of investing that I think you may be considering. So right now you've got one person, studio, one bed, very straightforward. Right. You've got a property manager. To the extent it's needed, that's up to you. Group homes, sure, there's more turnover. There's a little bit more profit to be made there, and that's the model I prefer. And then you can bump all the way up to the Airbnbs, the short-term rentals. That seems to be where killer cash flow is, but at the same time, it's a lot more work and seems to be much more hands-on. So everybody's got a different amount of involvement that they're willing to, or time or energy that they want to commit to their projects. Um, I don't think the group home dynamic is that much more work for the payoff. But again, I haven't dipped my toes in the short-term rental business to see how much more work that would be because it really seems like you can hire a lot of it out. So, you know, just something to keep in the back of your mind. Right. You seem very busy as it is, but it could be worth the payoff. 
I hear that there are property managers for short-term rentals that specialize in that that are coming out in certain areas, but they charge substantially higher percentages of gross rents than typical yeah, property managers. True. Uh, that's fair. As they should, because it's more yeah, work. Should it's a lot of freaking work, but man, I mean, my wife is a is the manager and she does a great job. <laughs> I don't know how she does it. I'm loving it, but she's doing it. <laughs> and then I got a buddy that manages it, and his eyes flicker right now. <laughs> you know, he's got like ten of them. He's Nikki, managing. So what's I don't the know. difference between the <laughs> numbers on the the one or? How many of them are you doing short term at this point? So I, I only in DC you could do your primary residence. They they've kind of uh, put some loop right. loops that you have to go through. Um, so you live in a two unit and you do one of your two units. I do one of the two units, and we did it because uh, convenience. I mean, you could have your parents or in laws come on over and and enjoy the one bedroom, one bath in in DC or friends. But then the other times I just Airbnb it and they incentivize you to to uh, do shorter term. So the longer term, you make less money. This is fascinating. Uh, but the shorter term, so the people that only say the two nights are the most profitable. So I can make almost triple what I would get for market, um, triple for what I could get. Um, so if I'm making 1,500, I could get up to like 4,500 on short term um but on long term it's only a thousand five hundred although that may have changed because rents are rising thousand five hundred sounds a little, a little yeah little, yeah little, little, little all right maybe i could get two grand but um uh -huh. yeah. but the cool thing is that they keep it really clean so i i could advocate for for this group uh, Je uh jeffrey was talking about the the most risky and the most hands-on they're very clean. Uh, they they come and go. Um, it's exciting um, because you're always meeting someone. They keep it like their house, and there's little, very little maintenance. So you know they don't abuse it as much as a renter. Um, but man, I just I love it. I'll I'll miss it once I I move into a bigger house, and won't be Airbnb. -ing. Like technically, Carlos, you could Airbnb that that spot behind you, which would be cool. But then you'd be having parties in the the pool, you know, uh, that of people that you don't want to. But that's that would be a sweet. Yeah, um, if I were younger and more nimble, I'm married with two dogs, yeah. and three kids, and blah blah blah. Um, I would maybe have like a four unit. I buy a four unit with a Fannie Mae conforming, live in a unit in Airbnb three. I could see doing that, you know. And then Scott, I travel a heck of a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably Airbnb my unit once in a while on the DL, right. you know, um, and and, and definitely let's call it th have three and a half Airbnbs and B's going with, right. with mine, you know, with some like locked closets for my own. Um, that's what I'd be doing if I if I were more nimble um, and able to to have a <clears throat> uh, lower friction lifestyle. But um, I'm definitely not not in a place where I can do that. Well, and when I was coming up, um, Airbnb just wasn't around. Because my first home was a four unit. Oh, that's right. That would have been killer. Um, we only have you know a little bit of time left, um, uh, and I want to just skip um, to over if it's all right with you guys to the market. I want to know what people are thinking. Oh, that's a great one, Nick. But, but 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 take it down so it's not too much of a distraction yet. Just for one second, um, what are people thinking about the market? And what are, what do you what do you want to assert you know or, or or put it out there that you wish you could know about the market? Because we're in quite a moment. We've had some cold water thrown on us big time. So I mean, I just bought a property a month and a half ago. I'm I have a client under contract today. He just got ratified. In my eyes, I'm not going to stop purchasing, even if it seems a correction is coming. Right. To what extent is it really coming? And as long as the numbers make sense today, why not buy it? You know, as long as the cash flow is there, or at least a break even, or if you're Carlos and cash flow is meaningless, then you know, hey, as long as there's a longer nut uh, in the equation. But I would love to hear if people are going to put a pause on buying and wait a year for a cool off, or if everyone's still going to keep going and you know try to hold on to it an arm or a, you know a loan for a few years and then try and refi out of it eventually 
I've never been exposed to that part of the world. I've never had to concern myself with an arm. The only thing I know about that is 2008. And maybe that's misguided, but I would be interested to hear everybody's thoughts on that. Yeah, I'll volunteer that I'm certainly, um, I'm still certainly still looking at deals. And um, if I think, as you said, if the numbers make sense, I'm willing to put up, accept a little bit less cash flow now, just be, because of the financing aspect and my, you know, what I'm looking at. Uh, as a te technical question, I'd be curious to see if I, my, my most, most recent uh, property I acquired via a, a debt service coverage ratio loan. And I'm wondering if people are finding better rates in like local lender portfolio loans for, for similar types of products. That's that's just something I'm curious about. But yeah, my general philosophy is, you know, take it, take my time and find those deals that, you know, that are going to cash flow a little bit with the understanding that eventually, um, you know, that you'll be able to cash out and get to a better rate and the rents will, will continue to go up one way or another. Um, I guess the only alternative would be if, if in addition to being a real estate investor, you also knew how to invest, let's say, in some sub, sub part of the oil and gas market or something that was doing really well during this environment that was outpacing real estate for some reason. I might say spend your time doing that, but I'm not an expert in that area. So I, I can't really shift my energy into a different area that will provide long-term wealth that's, that's doing better right now. That's my take on it. Great things. I'm, I'm just taking notes on the things you guys are saying. We can try to address them. Anyone else? How about this? Do people in this meeting believe that in the next year, real estate is going to go up or down? Do you have a belief about that? Katie, do you ever think about that? I spend a fair amount of time thinking about the market. Um, in the title piece of it, we end up being a little bit more reactive, um, except that we are trying to um, staff ourselves and prepare ourselves to be ready for market changes before they come. Um, you know, I've often said that I wish I could read the tea leaves on our market and see what's going to happen. Um, I know that you've been through this as well, but I will say that, um, the last time we saw a, a big shift in our market was really a leveling out more than a falling off. Um, and I think we're gearing up for another interesting market where in terms of numbers of transactions, we may see a leveling off um, compared to what we've seen in the past few years. Yeah, that sounds right to me. Um, anyone else have a, a view that the market's going up or down or sideways? There's some some of you who've not had a chance to, to, to chime in. John, Okeze, Sean. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give a quick take. Um, I... Personally, I feel like we've seen a peak in rates. I think that uh, the Fed's accomplished kind of like what they were trying to accomplish as far as combating inflation and cooling off the housing market. I think that um, uh, rates are kind of going to stay where they're at for the next two years, in my opinion. Um, as much as that's worth, it's not worth much. But <laughs> uh, and I think that in you know maybe in 2024 you might see them. Uh, dip a little lower than where they're at now but i think you're going to see them you know in five five six percent for for probably i'd say the next two years you know they're, they're just trying to cool off the market and then and slow everybody down you know because the whole we, we've lived in this fantasy land for the last two years it had to end at some point you know <laughs> so um so i think that you know, recession or no recession, I think that it's just they're they're it's it's going to slow down and then it, before it picks back up. Could could you show your face, Sean? <clears throat> and I yes, know yes. you're a lender, right? All right? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Cool. Definitely share your information. Hey. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I you you're know, with first home, right? Yep, hundred percent. Yep, I've been there nice. for uh, 
And you and you bought a property, your first property, you were saying? Yep. Uh, Halloween of last year in uh, the Baltimore City area. I uh, Actually, that's what got me into the field. So I connected with my lender, and uh, he introduced me to First Home, and I got right into it. You know, I took the leap of faith. And then, um, but I do plan to buy other properties in the neighborhood, I, honestly, because I'm, it's considered Baltimore City, but it's so close to the county that it's like not a really a bad area for investing, uh, in my opinion. It's like the Violetville area. I don't know if any of you guys are. Um, what is it called? Violetville. <clears throat> it's right in, it's in, uh, it's near Hale Thorpe. It's uh, right in Baltimore County. It's near the, the hospital, St. Agnes Hospital. But um, but yeah, I'm I'm definitely here if you guys ever want to talk about the market. Um, I like a lot of what you offered. Um, just now, I want to I want to go over some of it real quick. Um, it's disorienting to leave uh, virtually a ten year period of unreal rates um, and suddenly start looking at real rates. It's very discombobulating to see a war like the war that's ongoing that appears to have no solution in sight. It's very, it's very disconcerting to look at um, inflation in a real way for the first time in, I don't know, 40 years. Um, even, even though I may be a graybeard on this call, uh, meaning one of the eldest you know, here, maybe the oldest by far, even I, the old guy, have never been through inflation. You gotta go to like, to like my parents you know, to, to deal, to, 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 to talk about you know, meaningfully grappling with that. So, so this is a scary time. And I've been saying this a lot to my sales team. This is like in the scene in the movie where one guy grabs the other by the lapels and goes, get a hold of yourself, like settle down. And when I do that to myself, I'm getting a hold of myself. What I'm doing is I'm going, okay, the things I know and the things I don't know. Let's build a case for a framework or a theory uh, around what the heck it is that's going on and what, what's gonna happen. And, and Sean, just now, and he's a pro, he's, you know, he's in the mortgage business, he's talking, I'm sure he's not only talking to his colleagues, but they, companies like First Home, they, they fly people in to talk to you and help you set your mind straight about what, what the data is and what the data means. But he's reporting facts. He, you know, whether you know it or not, what he just said is uh, the markets slowed down. So it has slowed down. And they see it before we do because they get this great, you know, predictive data around loan applications. A very, very, very useful data point. Um, and uh, he also said that the Fed had a job to do to slow the real estate market down. It's a big part of the economy that the well, overall economy needs to get slowed down. So he said they had a job to do. That's the second thing he said. The third thing he said, which is very, very interesting to me, is they did it. So, you know, actually, I've, I've read a lot of articles, and you're the first person to position it in my head the way you did. They did it. So, in other words, inflation may not be solved, but they've already, with, well, mortgages don't address inflation. Mortgages address the overheated real estate market, and he's saying they did it. That's an interesting idea. What if the Fed feels we did it? Right? Not solving inflation, but slowing down the real estate market. And think about it. We already know that the market's slowing down. There are data points we can look at um, to, to know that the market's slowing down. Now, the question, the pointed question I was asking was, are values going to drop or go up? Because the market slowing down is not synonymous with values going down. Just like, by the way, even the overall economy slowing down to the point even of a recession doesn't necessarily mean that values are gonna go down. One of the problems is we hear certain things and we impute a whole other very extreme thing from that. Somebody said, it's cold outside. I didn't say it was freezing. I just said it's, you know, it was 80 yesterday. It's like 65 today. But I never said you needed a scarf. You know, and not, we're grabbing scarves because we hear it's cold. There's, there's degrees to this. And one of the problems is that A, some people hear one thing and then they, they necessarily infer the next. It's not necessarily a safe inference to make. And the other thing about it is that real estate's local. So what's happening here may not be happening there. I wanna call out Des Moines. 
Des Moines, Iowa. Read about it. Apparently, a lot of very pointy-headed analysts are telling us Des Moines in trouble, but they're not telling us that DC is in trouble, interestingly. So not all real estate is this one big thing, right? It, 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 it happens in localities. Nick, why don't you uh, show us that chart? Um, if, 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 if the picture is worth a thousand words, th then that's just an average picture. This one's worth 10,000. Yeah, give this me a minute. That Nick is going to pull up from the St. Louis Federal Reserve that looks at the inflate the sorry the recessions that we've had since 1965 it was about 50 years back um and uh i guess we've had eight recessions or so since then and brian i think you've seen this one because i think we talked about it a little bit on last month's call i feel like um russ you guys might have seen it as well I'm not sure who else has seen it I've been looking at this a lot. The blue line is the value of real estate. So over time, from left to right, basically goes up. And it has some squigglies where it goes down for a minute. The most pronounced moment where it really went down, well, was during the most extreme recession that we've had since 1965, which would have been the 2008 recession. You can see these gray bars, they represent a recession. Okay, and some of the gray bars are, are wider. Some of them are, are really skinny, hairline skinny, because that means it was a shorter recession. People hear the word recession, they freak out. It's a two quarter in a row period of GDP contraction. There's very little gray and there's a lot of white. White means non-recessionary periods Gray means recessionary periods. We're, we're almost always growing, except when we're not. And if it's two quarters long in a row, we call that big R recession. Huge word, people are writing about it. You can have smaller disruptions. You know, last quarter, we had contraction. If with this quarter we had contraction, we'd be calling it a recession. But apparently this quarter, it looks like it's going to be growth. So that... A little bit of a, of a blip there, but not a recession. Last recession? Whoa, just happened a moment ago, guys. It's the hairline one, the last one there, 2020. That was the COVID recession. So we actually had, we strung together two successive quarters of GDP contraction. Real estate basically continues to go up even through recessions, unless the recession is really extreme. Um, it's or interesting. Potentially has in, or potentially has... Uh, a basis surrounding the real estate market, right? I think the the real downturn there that we're seeing that happened in 2008 was mainly because the recession was caused by a real estate crisis, right? The other re recessions aren't, aren't necessarily uh, surrounding real estate. So that's why you see this continual trend upward um, and not a huge blip downward, right? Um, I, I think, uh, I, I like what Sean was saying about the Fed did it, right? It makes sense. Um, it has slowed down the market real estate wise, but this isn't just a real estate issue again, right? So I, I think, um, and I'm not in, in any kind of field where I'm in the know, right? I'm not a realtor. I don't see um, sales on a daily basis. I don't see, um, you know, the number of uh, applications that come across um, a lender's desk, right? But from from just from my reading and my assessment, it's like there are multiple things going on. Like Carlos was saying, rates are going to continue to go up, in my opinion, and that's because they have to continue to raise the Fed rate. And understanding that it's not directly related, but there is some relation to it, right? And I like what Katie was saying. The market here, even in the last turn down, right? Didn't really see a, a huge impact. It was more of a leveling off. And that's because of the nature of what happens in DC. And we, I think we all know that here, you know, there's, there's job security on a level that is unlike anywhere else in the country, just because of the federal government. We're not going to see the downturn. There's still going to be the demand. There's still Amazon coming. There's still Boeing coming. 
I heard someone else was coming to Arlington as well. There's just this this boom of in, industry coming here for for whatever reason, right? Just because it's the center of the center of the universe, you could say, right? So I think demand is always going to be there. Supply, thank you, Raytheon. Supply is still low, right? We are we are not able to grow too much more in this area. So the fact that demand is still there and it's not going anywhere and supply <laughs> supply is a problem in general right which is you know it, it, i think prices here i i i'm optimistic i like to think they're going to trend upwards a little bit just slightly i don't think they're going to level off but i think the worst case for us is a, is a leveling off well that's interesting and um i, I want to get back to what some of what you just said about jobs in a moment with another um, data source that we can share in a minute. I think I saw Okeze's hand go up and then Sean, I might have gotten that wrong, but since we haven't heard from Okeze, is it okay if we go to him first? How are you doing, man? Hey, uh, good good afternoon, evening. Um, sorry, I was uh, just taking in all the information. Um, I'm actually currently based in Arlington, so um, very familiar with the seismic shift that's been happening um, lately with um, the influx of people coming into this current area in Nova. Um, but as far as this graph that was shared um, by Nicholas, I think it's really um, eye opening. And John is I mean, like, I agree with what John just said, like as far as the um, opportunity for real estate might not necessarily change, but the impact of the other individual markets around potentially real estate do change depending on um, certain factors within those 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 actual recessions. And I think the prices going up only mean obviously great things, right? But it's still, there still needs to be some type of level of consistency. And I feel like that's where we're possibly going to have the opportunity in the next year or so, if things do trend the way they are going, to see more people really step into the market and really try uh, their hand at potentially trying to own something, but um, it just depends on the availability, right? And then also the um, the 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 uh, type of community those that do want to get into certain type of housing opportunities would want. Um, I think for me, um, I'm not an investor. I'm not a realtor. I'm actually in tech, so I kind of understand <laughs> the get up and go mentality. And so for my get up and go mentality, I feel like a community like that. Uh, there's a type of style. There's a there's a there's a there's a need for house some form of housing that is mobile. That's uh that's flexible. That's kind of similar to this market of hey, build a house, give it you know maybe two to three months, furnish it up a little bit, maybe even uh, now put it on the Airbnb market, let it you know kind of sell itself. And I think that's the type of mode or, or model that maybe some you know Gen Z younger folks are looking for compared to like more of the millennial kind of the traditional uh, quota, quote unquote, um, uh, generation of folks are looking for. So I think that's where I'm trying to get more knowledgeable about um, and kind of then pursue where I can kind of kind of hedge my bets on. But um, I think that's like actually a great, great point that John brought up in, as well as Carlos. I think you also mentioned that too, where like different markets are kind of like taking effect. Um, yeah, so. We'll, 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 we'll come back to that um, thing about different markets. Um, but yeah, no, I think, I think that what, what we don't know is exactly how bad it's going to be. What we, at least here, I suspect is it's not going to be that bad. And what we also do know though, is it will be bad enough that it's a disruption. And so in disruption comes opportunity. Uh, there could be some people for whom the market was just moving too fast. And that'll slow down a little bit so I can finally get in. Or there could be some sellers who, because of the disruption, their the, their business that they own isn't going well. So now they've got to sell because they need the money out of their house or their stock portfolio crashed at just the wrong time because they were about to retire. So now they need to sell one of their properties. I mean, so there's going to, there is some disruption here, whether it'll be as bad as like allowing you to have an opportunity to steal a property. I don't personally suspect that. And I'll talk a little bit more about why in a minute with another, another data source, but, but yeah, no, but there is some opportunity. You know, we do smell some blood, right? Like um, some some degree of that. Um, and Sean, you had your hand up. 
Uh, I, I was kind of, I was really just going to kind of second a little bit of what John was saying. So I was looking at a, um, a graph. It was the, uh, the savings rate of uh, the average household in the U S and it is, it is, is it's bare bone. It's almost as close to like where it was at 08. Now this is totally different than 08. Like it's nowhere near as bad of an issue, but, um, and I think part of that reason is because never in the history of the U S has gas been over a hundred dollars a barrel and interest rates continue to climb. Now, what that tells me is it's very open-ended. Like it can, rates can go up and they'll cut gas prices or something has to give, in my opinion, as far as uh, with, with what's, what's, what's going on with the, the savings rate right now. People are spending too much money. You know what I mean? Um, but also back towards like the recession thing, I, I feel recession creates opportunity. I don't feel like we're talking about recession all the time in the office. And it's like, it's opportunity for everybody. It's opportunity for, for realtors to, to grab market share. It's opportunity for investors to, you're, you're getting seller concessions. Like you haven't got seller concessions in the last three years. Like the market has been so hot that getting seller help is, was impossible almost for a while. It was rare. It was like a golden nugget. And then now I'm seeing like two, 3% seller help. Like it's, it's becoming a buyer's market again. And what will happen is you'll have a lot of you smart individuals reaching out and, and grabbing investment properties and then refinancing it in two years or three years when rates take a little dip again. So it's, um, I think it's just opportunity. That's all I want. I just wanted to kind of add on to what he was saying already, pretty much. Hey, Nikki, may I uh, share my screen also? John, were you going to say something else? Yeah, just a couple of points. Um, I, I, um, one of the things that stood out to me about what the Fed is doing is um, they're trying to take down em employment, right? Employment is super strong right now. Um, unemployment is super low. That's the thing that he's trying to go after. Um, that's one of the reasons I'm not so concerned about, uh, the business owner having an issue with his business because there's, there, there's job openings out there like, like never before that they just can't fill. Right. What that's what they're trying to address with the Fed. One of the big things they're trying to address with the Fed. Right. Uh, while the market, that's a interesting one. Um, uh, like you said that, you know, there's, there is an impact, right? There's always an impact with the recession. Um, the market could cause people to sell, but I always, I, I feel, and you know, and you would know better than me, but I always feel like that's always happening, right? Someone makes a bad move in the market or makes an investment in the wrong place. It's going to sway you one way or another on selling your property or selling, um, a rental. So I, I always think those things are happening and they're kind of in a wave, right? Well, I don't part know of that was, one of the things I was referring to was, um, like, people who've got like a 20 or 30% decline in their stock portfolio, sure. especially if they're approaching retirement, um, if they're lucky enough to have some, some rentals might just have to, um, unfortunately liquidate. It's just that something's got to come with that. Something's got to come back. Cause a lot of people were banking on their portfolios remaining, uh, you know, where they were at the end of last year. And, um, you know, that's all I was referring to. And I could be wrong. Yeah. Just, no, no, but that's a, that's a perspective I wasn't thinking about because I'm not, I'm not there yet. So I'm not close yet. Well, I, I like to think I'm somewhat close, right? I want to retire early, but um, not <laughs> just from the nine to five, the W-2. But um, yeah. one of the things also um, talking about 2008, right? One of the other things that makes me feel a little bit better that we're not there is the amount of equity that's in people's homes, right? Spending rates may be high, but there's still this large amount of equity that wasn't there in 2008 that is going to in, like it insulates people right so whether they're not you know they're, they're not going to go into foreclosure because they can just re um you know uh refinance and get some money out right so there may be a refinance boom again even though rates are really high but because of you know the the need to to tap into to equity uh be it because of you know retirement or what have you 
um, there may be another boom in refinance, just like there was when the rates went really low. Maybe not as as much as that because there's a lot of investors taking advantage there. But um, the the other point, the last point I got, I talk a lot. I'm sorry. Um, Sean was talking about there's opportunity that comes from recession, and I agree absolutely 100%. There's always opportunity, right? But where, right? Where is that opportunity? Scott mentioned maybe it's oil and gas futures, right, or or whatever. Something else could be that opportunity. It's not necessarily going to be that in in housing right? It may be somewhere else. And I think, I'm not saying it's not there in housing. I'm just saying, be prepared that it's it's better somewhere else and not necessarily here. A couple of things about real estate investing as, as potentially being an opportunity. First of all, um, as you saw with the chart of the recessions, um, it was mostly white and very little gray, which means the country, the economy was constantly growing with, with a few exceptions, a few exceptional moments where, where it wasn't. So what happens when you have, uh, yeah, it's true. Real estate always feels expensive, when, when, especially to your parents when you're buying it. They're like, what yeah. the heck are you doing? And maybe that's a point of clarification. I didn't mean like real estate is not an opportunity. I feel like real estate is always an opportunity, right? I just don't think it's um, a 2008 opportunity. No, no, definitely that's not. That's more what I was referring I like, to. I like that. I like that. Yeah. But, like, but I don't think it's going to be this, this opportunity where a whole bunch of foreclosures are on the, on, the, on the table. You can go get a house for half of what you could two years ago or this year, right? I don't think that's coming. Even even 25%, like, I don't think it's coming like I, that. I, that's I'm more what reading, I was talking about an opportunity. I'm reading, I, the 10 to 20, I'm, I'm reading the 10 to 20% is coming, but not here. Um, there are some places that are going to get whacked, I'm reading. And I'll share a little bit more about that in one second. But just, just uh, in terms of opportunity, one of the things about a, uh, a recession is that because it interrupts the pattern, um, people uh, consider adjusting their expectations and their allocations. So when it's growing like gangbusters, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna go into a higher risk, higher reward category. Your faith that the, the home run is there for you is, is, is very strong. And, and, and lots of times you get it, so you're swinging for the fences. And then when, when there's a disruption to that growth pattern, and you know, 20 to 30% loss in certain indices, uh, stock, you know, major stock indices is, is, is really, really big. Uh, it's a big disruption. So we may not be in a recession, but we definitely are getting whacked in equities. Um, then that, that money looks for another place to go. Not always logically, because apparently a lot of really good stock pickers right now are leaning forward and buying. I'm just not one of those guys, but like an average Joe might actually reallocate. And where? To something that they view uh, as, as safer uh, and, uh, and more uh, uh, less, less, uh, less volatile, lower risk and lower reward. And uh, let me be a little more humble in my expectations. How about some bonds? How about some real estate? So goal, hard assets. So real estate ends up benefiting from this disruption sometimes in this way, um, in that it's viewed as an alternative. Uh, we're, we're all sort of real estate minded. So there are a lot of people who, you know, definitely not real estate until something like this happens. And they go, well, gosh, I'm really not happy with my stock portfolio. And so maybe look at that. Let me, let me, let me look at this. Um, yes, that's a great book. Great movie. Great book. I read the book, saw the movie. Love it. That guy's, that guy's awesome. Uh, the Big Short. Highly recommend you guys look at that um, for the way contrarians think. Very, very helpful. The way people who, who see things a little bit more um, clearly than the rest of us, the way they think and then the, the way they act on that. So, so real estate can be really good as an alternative. Um, let me just uh, present something really quickly. I want to give this group a lot of credit. It, it begins with you, Jeffrey, talking about when, when we, I asked, do you think it's going up or down? Your long-term view. Um, you seem to know that it's a long game, Jeffrey. And I think that the chart on those recessions shows that, illustrates that. It's a long game. And even during scary moments, if you take a long view, um, you, you're going to end up up. Uh, you may have a moment that doesn't feel good along the way. Um, if you go through a major recession like 2008 and I did it and I had real estate and I didn't sell a thing. Uh, it, it really doesn't feel great and you feel like, whoa, boy, but, but you hang in there and then, and then you get through and you're like, thank God, I, I just, I didn't freak out. 
again, one, one friend shaking the other friend, you know, holding them by the lapel saying, get a hold of yourself. Um, so I, I'd like to also give this group a lot of credit and it begins with, wait, did he leave? John, no, John, um, on, uh, on, on really looking at the job market. Okay. Um, This is a, an article from WTOP News, and I'm just reading you the bottom line, the punchline. CoreLogic does see rapid price gains slowing nationally. It predicts the annual increase will slow to about 6% by March 2023. So this is, uh, I think this was in April or so. When was this? May. So looking almost a year out, thinking that real estate is going to go up about 6% across the country. Now, this is a quick little article that cited a much deeper analysis by CoreLogic. And John, are you still with us? I am, yeah. Yeah, I want to give you credit for really focusing in on the job market because the, you know, CoreLogic is like, get a hold of yourself, guys. Think this through. What do you know? What don't you know? We know that jobs matter for real estate, right? We really care about that as long-term uh, buy and hold people, even fix and flip. Like you care to know that there's a market to meet you on the back end, whether you're gonna sell it or rent it. People gotta be employed to do that. So now let me share the, 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 uh, the actual article. It's a longer article that came out in Fortune. The odds of a home price correction just spiked. This chart shows you if your local housing market is at risk. I probably ought to put this in the chat because it's too good not to. Um, it's amazing how data works. It's just like at your fingertips. You could produce well, I just raised my hand by mistake. <laughs> Where's the damn chat? Okay. Nick, can you share this one? Yeah. So you, you, I'm going to just give it to, I'm going to just yeah. send you an email. It's okay. Okay. Thanks. all the way to your right. It's not it's okay. I got Nikki. Nikki's going to do it. I just sent it to you, buddy. So Thanks. I can talk about it. So while he's sharing it, I'll talk about it. So what this thing does, you guys, is it's really cool. It's a chart. Everyone likes little charts, right? You put your cursor over the thing and it shows you what's happening in a locality. Okay. Okay. Durham Chapel Hill. Odds that, well, what's this called? The odds of regional home price dropping prices dropping over the coming year durham low odds um and so i'm gonna i'm gonna hover it over our area in a minute but they call out actually it's interesting that durham has low odds because they do call out the carolinas as a whole on a statewide level the msa of durham a metropolitan statistical area may be doing better but the carolinas as a whole are a little bit in trouble and john this is this is to give you credit because you know intuitively what to think about well, CoreLogic is actually basing this analysis in great part on two things. How much of a run-up these areas just had and also what their employment picture looks like, very importantly. Nick said real estate always feels expensive. You can ask a guy or a gal, can you afford it? They'll go, oh, no, I can't afford that, when technically they can actually afford it. Core logic is looking at what people technically can afford once they get over the adjustment that they may have to spend a little bit more on housing than they'd like to. A number of people are going to go on ahead and do that. A number of other people will not. Then there are going to be other people who literally are priced out. They cannot. It's Look not at that important. northern cluster. My so, brother bought in uh, Long Island. How's Long Island doing? Trying to find D.C. Well, look, I think this, well, that's probably not reaching out to Long Island. Let me see if I can. How about that little red area right above it? Right. Yeah, there we go. Well, that's Connecticut on the other side of the bay. Um, yeah, yeah, somewhere else they group together. I think that does include Long Island. Just like yeah. when you go to D.C., it includes like um, Alexandria, West Virginia, Maryland. Is that Delaware? I, 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 I'm trying to get to D.C. Uh, oh, my name, my name. That was Baltimore. That's low, which is interesting. And there we go, folks. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to leave my cursor right there for the rest of my life. No. So, so <laughs> it's, it's low. Okay. And, and the, um, 
the article, like I said, says that the nation as a whole is going to be is going to be six percent, but it's made up of areas that are, you know, really, really, really high. Like look, Arizona, right? They keep talking about Arizona. Oh, that's our man Shane. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> Shane, by the way, Shane could Shane could handle a twenty percent correction. Yeah, he could. He saw like 50 percent appreciation in the last two years. It's insane. One of the things we can be grateful for, you know, how like sometimes a parent type will be like, hey. Keep your head down, fly under the radar. Don't don't get too much attention. Someone yeah. can sort of whack you for that. We're sort of like that as a real estate market. You know, we've been like slow and steady, growing, good, good, but not too crazy. I'm happy about that at this moment because prospectively, we're looking pretty good. And and John, again, to just drive the point home, this analysis is great. Is 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 uh, based in great part on on employment. How you know how well employed. And how well compensated people are. So, so they're looking at that, and they're trying to help us understand the difference between what Nick said. It feels like I can't do it versus, well, technically you can. Are you gonna? Some of you will not, but other people got it. There's marriages, divorces, births, deaths, inheritances, all the things that trigger real estate activity. So, I think we're gonna we're gonna leave you with that. I I said we'd go an hour, but we went 90 minutes. We never seem to be able to say goodbye. Um, Tell your friends, you guys, about this group. Everybody bring a friend next next month. We we do them on the what? Is it the third? Third Tuesday. Tuesday 5 30. Um, sometimes we have as many as 50 people. Often it's around 20, 30. Um, this was a this was a smaller meeting. Um, wanted to thank Nick um, in particular and, and Katie also for everything you do. Katie, one of the things I'm hoping that that uh, you can get out of this uh, group is maybe some developers who um, you know come to you repeatedly, yeah. um, and you can become their their person. Um, I have uh, Nick and Nick and I have somebody in mind, um, a, de a developer duo. Ooh, I don't know. Them. How busy are you? How how many phone calls do you want, Katie? <laughs> all the calls. All the calls. All right, all right. Let's give it to her. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> she asked for it. Thanks everybody for sharing and thank um, you. Thanks everyone. I appreciate yeah, you having me. Nice. Nice. Hope to meet you in person, Jeffrey. Absolutely. And, okay, I have a quick question. So, is there like you know a, a kind of a platform that's that everyone is on that we can like kind of message and ask further questions, or we kind of like meet and then have those questions? You know, it's oh, a great idea. What if we started a WhatsApp group, uh, Nick? Yeah, yeah, WhatsApp or uh, whatchamacallit. Group me. Script. But oh, what? I like WhatsApp better. I, I like, one of the things I love about WhatsApp is you can load so much data from really? anywhere. Oh, yeah. yeah sure, like you got a four-minute video and it's going to clog up your phone. Put that bad boy on WhatsApp, no problem. It's true. You could put it for now, uh, meetup.com slash grid DC. But you know what? Okay, so I think it's a great question. We're going to work on on setting up a WhatsApp group. We just need everyone to sign up for WhatsApp and then yes. and then uh, maybe in. initiate it. Opt in, yeah. Awesome. All right. Oh, great definitely. idea. Yeah, you got the slower response blog channels, like meetup group, but then, yeah, the text is, like, awesome. I'm not a huge fan of script, though. You know, it just – WhatsApp does seem a little bit more reachable. Like, I would – Check WhatsApp before script if you guys ever heard of script. It's like a All right, guys. In the All right, guys. Carlos, I, I say it every time. When's the in person? <laughs> I know. Soon. Soon, Bri. Soon. We should do it next month. Talk about it. All right. Yeah. All right.